Thank you very much uh, for joining us here. I'm uh, proud to be here with my colleagues, our Senate Majority Leader John Flanagan, our uh, Deputy uh, Majority Leader in the State Assembly, uh, Assemblyman Phil Ramos, and of course uh, Governor Andrew Cuomo. Proud to be joined by members of law enforcement to, who are here, and uh, I particularly want to acknowledge, of course, uh, the men and women of the Suffolk County Police Department, uh, led by our Police Commissioner Tim Sini, our Chief of Department Stuart Cameron. I want to thank them for the work that they have been doing um, every day, uh, working to fight this scourge in our community. Public safety has been one of my top uh, priorities as Suffolk County Executive. And I'm very proud of the work that has been done uh, here by the Suffolk County Police Department to keep our communities safe and make Suffolk County one of the safest counties, not only in the state of New York, but across this country. But the reality is that we are facing a new threat uh, by a criminal organization that is as brazen as it is brutal in the level of violence and brutality uh, that it has demonstrated. And any community that has gone through what we have gone through, that has seen the, the brutal murders of young people, uh, we have made a commitment and a pledge that we will not only bring justice to the families who have lost loved ones, bring peace to the communities that have suffered this trauma, but that we will do everything that we need to do to eliminate this criminal organization from our county. And from the very beginning, the governor has been with us, has stood with us, and supported the work that we are doing here on the ground, and it said whatever resource we need, he is here to provide. And I want to thank him for his leadership. I want to thank him for being here today to talk about this incredibly important issue for all of us and our communities in Suffolk County. Please welcome our Governor Andrew Cuomo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to join uh, County Executive Ballone, uh, Assemblyman Phil Ramos, and uh, Senator John Flanagan. We recently finished the uh, state budget, the state operating plan for the year, and uh, much of it deals with uh, dealing with the problems on Long Island. We were just discussing the issues of the environment and water quality. Uh, the state is also going to partner with Suffolk County and Nassau on transportation issues, highest level of education funding uh, in the history of the state of New York because education is a top priority, criminal justice reform, college affordability, workers' compensation reform. So the, the plan does a lot of work uh, investing in our partnership with Long Island, and we're very proud of it. Uh, but at the top of the list is public safety. And if government has one responsibility, first and foremost, it is to protect the public, period. That is job one, is public safety. And uh, Suffolk County and the men and women of uh, Suffolk County law enforcement have done an extraordinary job. Uh, and uh, we want to thank them all for their great, great service. Uh, the FBI has done a great job as part of a task force working with Suffolk County, other police departments also. There is a current scourge that is going on across the country, going on across the world, frankly. Um, we have it in other parts of the state, but nowhere like on Long Island, posed by MS-13. MS-13 is an international criminal organization, period. That's what they are. Uh, they are uh, a network that has cr created horrendous crimes. Uh, their currency is fear and intimidation. Uh, and they are getting more outrageous 
uh, and more obnoxious in their activities. Um, as part of our process through the state budget, uh, the Senate, by the leadership of Senator Flanagan, and the Assembly in consultation with Assemblyman Phil Ramos, we are going to have the State Police of New York set up a high-intensity gang unit that is going to focus on gang activity through the auspices of the State Police and Superintendent, State, uh, uh, Superintendent of State Police, George Beach, who's here today, where they will provide intelligence expertise, electronic equipment, including electronic, state-of-the-art electronic surveillance equipment, vehicles, aviation equipment, etc., to combat uh, exclusively gang violence in select pockets of the state, and especially focusing on MS-13 on Long Island. Uh, the state police will also be participating with additional resources in the task force that Suffolk County has put together, the Law Enforcement Task Force, and will be providing an additional 25 personnel, uh, police officers, to patrol the area of Brentwood and Central Islip, which is the locus of the MS-13 activity. Uh, sometimes the issues we deal with are nuanced and subtle, Sometimes the truth is in the gray. Uh, that is not true in this situation. MS-13 are thugs. That's what they are. They are thugs. They are thugs who prey on young people and recruit young people, uh, often unaccompanied children from Central America, uh, and they seduce them into a life of gang violence. They involve themselves in robbery, prostitution, drugs, grand larceny, kidnapping. Uh, as I mentioned, their, their calling card is fear and intimidation. Uh, and they prey on the working families of Brentwood and Central Islip. And our job is to say to MS-13, enough is enough. We're going to do everything we can to stop it. It violates the public safety, and public safety is job one. This concerted law enforcement effort now, combining federal, state, and local resources, uh, we believe is going to make a market difference. Uh, and as I said, we will not rest until MS-13 is put out of business, uh, because we have zero tolerance in this state for the thuggery that MS-13 has made their calling card. Thank you very much, and it's my pleasure to be here. And let me turn it over now to my colleague. Uh, and let me thank Senator Flanagan for his cooperation in uh, working with us to come up with this plan for the state police. Senator Flanagan. Thank you very much. Um, you know, I was thinking about this. I really want to thank the governor for being here on Long Island last week announcing record investments in the issue of opioid and heroin addiction today, talking about billions of dollars for clean water. And what it drills down to is quality of life. Quality of life. What's important to the people we represent? They want to know that they're being well taken care of, that their government is there on their behalf. And I think of this first and foremost as a parent. I've been blessed with three wonderful children. I worry every single day about the well-being of my kids. And they're good kids. And they have good lives. But it could happen like that. Some tragedy could befall a family, and it certainly has. And when I think about these people from MS-13, last week I was watching national news. Long Island was mentioned in every national news show, every one. And it was all about MS-13. Thank God we have the Suffolk County PD and our law enforcement people who are with us. The men and women who serve in that capacity, uh, they are phenomenal. They. Um, they put their lives on the line every single day to make sure that you and I and our constituents can feel a good quality of life and feel safe in our communities. These are people who commit vicious, heinous crimes. And I wonder, I really do wonder, these people are so bad, what kind of soul do they have if they even have one at all? But the governor's right. 
he had mentioned this to me a couple of weeks ago and was stressing the importance of us being able to help in complement the efforts here that are done locally and with, between the FBI, the state police, and the Suffolk County PD, it's serious work. I know it's serious work, but I feel like many hands may like work in this instance. And I'm, I'm proud and gratified. And you know what? I feel better. I feel better already with the work that's being done by the Suffolk PD. But with our able force from the state police, I think we can uh, really help address this situation and make people feel safer and get the bad guys off the streets. Governor, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I uh, would like to join with my colleagues, my colleagues on both sides of the aisle here, to, on this united effort to, to try and deal with the issue of gang violence. I want to thank the governor for coming down to Brentwood and Central ISIP and really uh, finding some creative ways to deal with the situation. I was a police officer for 20 years, patrolled these streets, and the governor understands, like I do, that in order to deal with the gang issue, we must not go after only the individual crimes. We have to go after an organization. And in order to do that, we have to have all our ducks in a row and all resources united on the same page. We have state police. We have village police on Long Island. We have county police. There are the, the, the FBI. All those entities need to converge on communities such as Brentwood and CI and apply those resources uh, united in a way that is directed towards the organizations. Now, what the governor has done is brought a major component, brought the state police to work in unison with our county police to deal uh, with the gang problem and provide some kind of security in our street. On behalf of the uh, uh, residents of this community, we'd like to thank the governor for bringing some resource that will bring some peace of mind. The governor understands, as we all do, that this is not a situation where we could only arrest our way out of, although security is a key component. The fact that we have the proper amount of police officers patrolling our streets, the proper amount of detectives are, that are investigating the organization, all that is important combined with other efforts that the governor and the legislature has done to provide programmatic relief to, uh, to help with uh, gang prevention. All those components put together can help put a dent on the, this tragic situation that is happening here in Brentwood. So I would like to thank the governor on behalf of our community for bringing a, a, a small amount of peace of mind in that we know that the powers that be in a community that has many times felt isolated finds that the powers that be and the governor and everybody has come down here to focus on t attention on this very tragic time on the needs of this community. Thank you. Let me thank Senator Flanagan and uh, Assemblyman Ramos and County Executive Ballone again. Uh, any questions at this time? Uh, yeah, the, uh, the superintendent has full flexibility to deploy the personnel as uh, he sees fit. He'll be working with the task force and whatever the task force says uh, is the way that we can be most helpful, that's what we'll do. We can do undercover work, we can do patrol work, uh, marked cars, unmarked cars, uh, whatever is the best way uh, in consultation with the task force. And as uh, Assemblyman Ramos said, you know, the key is the coordination. Governmental coordination is not an oxymoron, right? But it's, it's very hard to do. You have all these separate agencies, they all do business their own way, we form a task force, but this is now really about information sharing, asset sharing, uh, and deploying personnel so we have a comprehensive approach. And the state police will be very flexible. The best way they can help uh, to fill in the effort, that's what we'll do. Primarily, the, the quote-unquote assets are about equipment, vehicles, personnel. Uh, but if there's something more, we're open to that also. Uh, how, whatever it takes to uh, help on the problem. Again, this is, as Assemblyman Ramos said, a, a two-prong approach. Part of it is law enforcement. Part of it is arrests. 
Part of it is protecting the people in Brentwood and Central Islip who are now afraid to come out of their ho homes at night. And part of it is alternatives and community services so we reach out to these young people before the gangs reach out to the young people. So we're going to be doing both. I'm sorry. Uh, we've been talking about this for the past several weeks. As you know, uh, just uh, a few days ago, there was another set of murders, uh, four more additional murders, which uh, really made an already reprehensible situation even worse. Uh, I was speaking with my colleagues in Albany all through the budget process on this. Uh, I can't speak to uh, what the Attorney General is doing. I don't know what he's doing. Uh, we don't do international uh, in a colloquial sense from a governor's point of view. Uh, I consider them an international organization. As far as a federal, federal classification, I'll leave that to the feds. Immediately. There's going to be conversations today. Uh, our personnel are available immediately, so we'll just find out the best way to work with the task force. We're already working with the task force. This is going to be an increased presence, and they're available immediately. Look, that is a problem that we have all across the board. Uh, it's gotten worse recently. People who are undocumented, uh, I've heard cases where they're afraid to go to a hospital. Uh, they're afraid to go to any authority or any institution because of the current climate. Uh, that has not been the situation with the state of New York. It's not the situation with the state, of poli with the state police. We are trying to protect people. Uh, and we are trying to get the bad guys and any information they have, any communication they have with the state police is in that vein. The state police are not a force that does immigration enforcement or immig immigration uh, control. It's just not the jurisdiction of the state police. They're here to protect the community from MS-13 and people should cooperate. Yeah, I don't want to get, uh, I don't want to engage in politics, mm -hmm. but uh, let me state a fact. I believe President Obama's policy was always to deport undocumented criminals. Uh, I believe he specifically spoke about gang members. And he has uh, made a point of saying gang members uh, who are undocumented, illegal, uh, should be deported. I have not uh, on this trip, no. No. I want to see Amtrak do a better job. You know, look, uh, in general, Penn Station is a debacle. It has been for decades. Uh, we have disregarded our infrastructure in this state and in this nation uh, to a point where it's governmental malfeasance. Uh, we haven't built a new airport in this country since the Denver airport over 20 years ago and we have a substandard transportation system. You fly into any country around the world and you'll land in a better airport, a more sophisticated transportation system. 
So the country's been negligent, the state has been negligent for decades. Uh, with my colleagues in the Senate and the Assembly, we now have the most robust building program in the history of the state of New York, over $100 billion. Roads, bridges, airport, airports, LaGuardia Airport, John F. Kennedy Airport, MacArthur Airport on Long Island. Uh, so we're making market differences. We're improving the Long Island Railroad all across the board. Penn Station is one of the targets for us to improve. Now, we don't own Penn Station. Amtrak owns Penn Station. Amtrak operates Penn Station. The Long Island Railroad uh, rents, leases uh, two concourses. On the concourses that the Long Island Railroad leases, we already have an improvement plan where we are in the midst of combining those concourses with the Farley Post Office across the street to have a grand terminal for the Long Island Railroad. But the remainder of Penn Station is run by Amtrak. I'm very dissatisfied with the job they did. I sent a letter with Governor Christie telling them that. Uh, they have not kept us in the loop in terms of the repairs they're making. The repairs they're making have been substandard and have been slow. Uh, and they're creating not just an inconvenience, uh, it, is, it is so bad that I think it's jeopardizing the basic service of the rail lines that are going into Penn Station. So uh, the federal government has to get on the case and they have to do a better job. There is no excuse for the inferior operation by Amtrak of Penn Station. Fix it. Fix it. Do your job. Be competent. Run Penn Station competently. Have tracks that are well maintained. Have signals that operate. Have enough security personnel uh, to keep the passengers safe. Amtrak has to do a basic job in competence. It's a federal responsibility uh, and that's where the fault and the blame lies. Uh, I wish, frankly, that we controlled Penn Station. It would be a much different situation than it is. No, it is a facility owned by Amtrak. That's one of the great frustrations. Look, when we own a facility, uh, there's no doubt that uh, we are capable of making mistakes. There's also no doubt that we learn from our mistakes. And there's also no doubt that we have stepped up to the plate, and the Senate has stepped up to the plate, and the Assembly has stepped up to the plate, and we have a $100 billion building program. New LaGuardia, new John F. Kennedy, new Penn Station concourses for the LIRR. There's also no doubt that Amtrak has been substandard in their performance of their basic duty. It's affected millions of people. It's happened again and again and again, uh, and it is entirely infuriating. I understand why the passengers uh, and the commuter, commuters have lost all their patience, uh, and I'm with them. I have lost patience with Amtrak and with the federal government, and we need federal officials to give fewer speeches and actually get to work and roll up their sleeves and fix the situation with Amtrak and Penn Station. But that is, they have no kidding, that's the challenge. We're building LaGuardia Airport. The challenge is build a new airport and operate an airport at the same time. That is the challenge. That is the job. That is the art form. You can't close Penn Station and fix the tracks. The reason they are supposed to be a skilled operator is because you have to do the maintenance while the facility is operating. That's the definition of the job. You have to do the story, write it, print it, uh, um, articulate it into a camera, and show up at the event. It's not either or. Your job is doing both. Their job is fixing the tracks and operating them at the same time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thomas. Good to see you. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you Thanks. Thank you. Good to see you guys.